Thank you for joining me on jamaicans.com for Shelf Life. Go ahead, hit that like button, share this with a friend, and drop a comment in the space below. Welcome to Shelf Life. Today on Shelf Life, I have a friend with me. Her name is Patricia Reed Wall, and she's a happily retired young woman. She spent her years, her working years, that is, in the financial field, working in Jamaica. She worked in St. Martin, and she worked in Nevis, and she retired at 63, still in the prime of her life, something that we all want to do. Now, she spends her time doing things that she likes most, like traveling, well, not in COVID, playing the organ at church, learning new things, and writing. Her first book, Retirement, A New Adventure, is what we're going to talk about today. And maybe we can all learn how to retire like her. Let's chat. Patricia Reed Wall, welcome, welcome to Shelf Life. It is so good to see you, my friend. Good to see thank you. Thank you so good. much, Judy. Oh, thank you. You know, when, when I look at your, um, your, your name, Shelf Life, I'm saying to myself, a 72-year-old on Shelf Life. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're not on the shelf. You're still having a life. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you're a happily retired young woman because you say 72, but you know, 72 is a new 52, you know. I mean, I have lots I of 72 year old friends who are living life and quite, quite happy. So, I, 72 is not what it used to be. Back in the day, you put on your dust and go to bed. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. But you retired young and it has kept you young. And we're going to talk about your book, which is all about that whole retiring thing. But tell me about yourself. What did you do before you retired? And why did I you was, decide to retire young? Well, I, I was a chartered accountant. Um, that, that was my profession. I was actually working in Nevis. I, I was in the Eastern Caribbean for like, 11 years okay. from St. Martin to Nevis. And I had uh, an uh, illness. My, I had kidney, kidney um, problems, okay. issues. And then I also had a tumor that was messing up everything inside and I had to come to Jamaica. And after seven hours of surgery, I, I thought I was dead. I myself thought I was dead. Oh. <laughs> Yes, because it, it was really, it was really bad. And uh, uh, that, that was, uh, you know, I had to look at my life after that. And I thought it would be better to be back in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Because at least here, I'm close to all of the, the, the specialized medical, right. medical, um, you know, facilities. Whereas in Nevis, you, you don't have that much, you know, whenever anything is, is, is wrong really really wrong they have to fly you out okay so it it was because of that and i just decided you know something i am going to just just stop you know this this heavy working and you know uh just going from morning till night sort of a thing mm -hmm. and uh, and just just stop so yeah, i i, I never even i never considered it that i was retiring you know <laughs> i in my mind in my mind i i was always i i was going to stop working because i had never i had never thought about retirement before never thought about it never made any preparation for it no, nobody had had given me any retirement seminar nothing i i just decided i was going to stop working because you know of, of what was happening to me I, I i know how that works i myself have had to deal with illness and had to leave my job my regular job and my high paying job and um just said you know what that's it i'm done but then i've always yeah. i've always had something going on the side so i've always kind of worked for myself in the middle of all of that anyway so you decided to retire at 63, an age that so many of us aspire to retire, but we know we can't retire at that kind of age, except for my friends who have been <laughs> in the same job for 40 years and, you know, by then they can retire. But yes, um, yes. a lot of us really can't. So how did that transition go for you? How did you make that transition? 
boy, uh, let me tell you something. I was happy to be back in Jamaica because, you know, as I say, I was concerned about my health. And, you know, being close to the, the, the specialized medical uh, facilities that I needed was I was happy to be back here. Mm -hmm. But the problem was that everybody I knew was gainfully employed. I, I thought I would have had people, you know, to on a Monday to um, go to Duns River with me. And then on Tuesday, you know, maybe we drive over um, Junction and, and Portland and Boston and have jerk pork and all that. And I, I discovered that there was nobody, nobody had any time for me. Everybody at work was, right there. Everybody working. It was, it was a rude awakening. An absolute rude awakening. Mm -hmm. So I, here was I with myself, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now having to decide what am I going to do with myself and what am I going to do for myself? Mm -hmm. I have a friend of mine who just took leave of absence, COVID and all of that, and she works in the classroom and she decided, you know what, I can't, I can't hack it. When you reach, when you pass 60, you can't hack a whole lot of things, you know? Or you reach 60, you can't hack a whole lot of yes, things. Yes, yes. But she decided that she just, she couldn't take it. So she was going to take a year off. And sometimes she calls me in the middle of the day. Like so many other people do because I work from home. So they just assume I have time. And I, she's like, what are you, what are you doing tomorrow? And I'm like, um, I'm working. <laughs> so yes, I get, I get how difficult <laughs> the transition that is. When now you're not working and your friends still are working. So from out of that, you found out that you could do other things with retirement. But your mother, you mentioned that your mother was a great influence. And in what way? She was just a, a very, very active retiree. And trust me, she didn't look her age. I, I only found out her age when she died. Wow. And <laughs> yes, because, because she, she has always kept it from, from me. So your mom literally was the opposite of what we say when we say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> and that's one of the things that you well, try to tell people. I, that's what I tell people all the time, right? You know, uh, I mean, people say that you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but I tell them that you can teach an old dog new tricks because after, you know, trying to find out what am I going to do, I started doing things like uh, I started taking violin lessons. <laughs> no, I had, I, had, I had always wanted to play the violin, right? And then I went to this concert and I saw this little kid playing the violin and she looked so cute. And I said, I wonder if I would look cute playing the violin too. <laughs> and I, I immediately contacted um, Mrs. Paulette Bellamy and, uh, you know, started violin lessons. How, how did that go? How did that go? You can play now? I, listen to me. I passed grade one and I passed grade two violin. And when I, w and let me give you the joke about the grade two exam. When I went into the examiner, into, into the examination, the, I saw the examiner do like a, 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 a double take, right? Because it seemed as if he was expecting a young person, mm -hmm. right? Not this old granny. <laughs> so well, it helps. So I saw it him in a so sort of. You, it helps I, though that it helps though that you uh, you already play a musical instrument because you're an yes, organ. Yes, because yes, right. because I yes, I already I already played the piano and the organ. So you know, I was was totally and totally familiar with music itself. So so when the music is is put in front of me, you know, I know exactly what 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 it is. The problem was the instrument. The instrument is a very difficult instrument because uh, the violin does not it does not have any markers. There are no markers for the notes. Right. You have to. It's it's a judgment. You see. Mm. So, um, but I, I, I enjoyed, I, I really enjoyed it. And I, I still, it's just because of COVID because I, I, I now go with the Edna Manley community, uh, orchestra. Oh, and wow. I, I, yes, yes. I, I go there. They have a community orchestra that anybody can, as a, if you play an instrument, you can That's come. Done. So of course I, I started going, wow. I started going in January. 
unfortunately, you know, uh, it had to be, be um, you know, suspended because of, of COVID. COVID right. I, I also, I also go with the National Youth Orchestra. Okay. So I, I, because they are doing programs in the schools. Okay, hold on one second now. The National Youth Orchestra. You're hearing that people, yeah. this lady who is in her 70s is going with the National <laughs> Youth Orchestra because she's retired and she's teaching us that old dogs can learn new tricks. And her book is Retirement and New Adventure. So this is one of the adventures that you took. And I want to parlay that into one of the sections of your book mm -hmm. where you talk about getting creative and turning hobbies into something professional. Because all of us have hobbies, you know, things that we do in our regular work life. We don't have time to do these things on a regular basis, but they're kind of like hobbies. And you're saying that one, we can learn some new stuff while we're retired, but we can also maybe turn them into something more professional or something even bigger than just a general hobby. Precisely, because for instance, if I really were to take the violin seriously, in another two years or so, I could be playing for weddings and playing for events and, and, and all of that, you know, if I really were to take it seriously. Yes. But, uh, but, but in terms of hobbies, I, I, I used to write a lot of poetry and so on poetry and skits and so on, you know, for church and, right. uh, and for office. And, you know, when anybody's retiring, I would normally write things and, you know, right. with a lot of humor and everything. Mm -hmm. And what I have been doing with that now, which, which is a hobby, I am now actually able to earn from it right. because I, I am now writing, I write poems for people for occasions okay. and they pay me for it and uh, recently I wrote a poem for uh, a, a, a gentleman who has an online library okay. an online library where we are um, for children okay. and he turned my poem in got it illustrated by an illustrator and turned it into a, into an, an actual children's book nice. that is titled my mama's hair Okay. And uh, yes, and it's in the library with my name on it, on nice. the online library. And uh, also, there is a, a gentleman in Italy, well, he saw that product and he reached out to me. He was doing a coloring book. Uh, it's, a, it's a girl and it's a treasure hunt. Uh -huh. And she's going from country to country to country to country trying to find a, a, a treasure. Right. And what, what he asked me to do was for each country to write a little a little poem, a little um nice. four line, four line right. thing for that. So I, I actually got them to, to put Jamaica as one of the poems. Of the yes. as, as one of the one of the countries. Mm -hmm. And they, they uh, so they 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 got a illustrator from India and he did the drawings. Mm -hmm. So it's a coloring book. And you have the drawings and, and they are of, of, of different scenes from different countries. The scene from Jamaica is one with Bob Marley standing nice. up um, playing and watching some children playing um football. watching some children playing football. Yes. So or they're soccer, playing football. As soccer as they call it in America. Right. In so soccer. he's he, they're playing and he is with his guitar standing and, nice. and strumming his guitar. That 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 is a drawing. So the children will color that. Right. So you actually are turning what is a hobby into something professional. Folks, what we are talking about is the book is called Retirement and New Adventure. But it's about more than just talking about the book. It's about talking about how this lady has lived that. She didn't just write it. She actually has lived it. One of the other things that you have done, you've always liked doing, is travel. And you, what I like about your book is that it doesn't just give your experience. It gives practical ideas and practical examples of how you can do some of the things. And so the travel section was one of it. You actually went into great detail about what you should plan, how you should plan it, and how you can actually travel, even if you're retired, um, with not a lot of money. So talk to the people who don't have a lot of money, who did not spend a lifetime in the finance industry, but are looking to retire. What are some of the tips that you give them in your book? 
well, well, one of the, the tips I, I give them in the book is about these no frills airlines. When, when you travel on the, the traditional airlines, you pay a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some no frills airlines. Basically, you get nothing, right? Except, except a seat. You walk and, with and a that trip. Time. You walk with and a that, that trip. <laughs> yes. So, um, and those, their, their fares are usually, usually, um, you know, much, much less. Even, even in February, I, when I went up, I went to Philadelphia and I actually missed my American Airlines flight coming back um, to Miami. And I got on one of these, these um, Frontier, it, it's Frontier, you know, that no frills, mm -hmm. uh, Frontier Airlines at uh, one o'clock in the morning and paid, paid little and nothing for the flight. I, I, I know about those no frills because I, I did a lot of it, a lot of it back in the day. Um, I won't call any names, but I call it the minibus in the sky. And I remember when the minibus in the sky just started coming to Jamaica and I was still living in Florida because, you know, I live in both places. Um, but at the time yes. I was working a regular job. And every weekend I'm in Jamaica and people would be like, what? How you? I'm like, $9, my friend, <laughs> $19. Exactly. The minute exactly. I saw that fear, I would jump on it, buy it, and I'm out of here. So yes, exactly. I, I know about the no frills traveling. And then in today's world, there are so many other ways to travel too and so many other choices for accommodation because, you know, things like homestays, Airbnb, and all of that makes it so much more affordable for you to find different ways and you you mentioned traveling like a local which we do when we travel right right but let let me just say something mm -hmm. you see all the people who you vex with all the family members that you vex with and all the friends that you vex with right you 40 year olds and 30 year olds and 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 50 year olds you better go and friend them up right <laughs> because when you when you reach to 70 and you can't afford the hotel right those are the people that you're going to have to say um i'm coming to new york can i stay with you for a week all right so so go and rekindle and repair all of those broken and lapsed relationships because you're gonna need them when you get to this age all right so that is very very good advice for people who want to retire eventually and travel you need to go find all your family all over the world and get to know them because one day one day you're going to need them and of course you talk about volunteering and mentoring which you know everybody knows once you retire that is one of the things that you do but you also talk about the joys of the internet <laughs> now for people like me hold on people like me who spend about 70% of my day on a computer because I'm a writer, filmmaker, you know, I've spent so much of, and I do marketing. So I spend too much of my life already on a computer. For somebody who is retired, you say get connected and there are joys to the internet. Talk to me about the joys of the internet because me don't really find them yet. <laughs> well, in the, in the first place, well, as far as I'm concerned, if you are not a digital, if you, you, you haven't got, gotten into the digital space now, you are missing out a lot. In the first place, you get connected to the people, um, reconnected with people who used to go to school with you. Yes. You find all, your, all, all the friends from Sunday school mm -hmm. and you find them on Facebook and you're able to reconnect with them. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is wonderful, right? That, that connection. There, there is another important thing, which I call find your tribe, because there are a lot of groups on the That's internet, a, a lot of Facebook groups, for instance. So if you are somebody who, who you love gardening, you can uh, join in one of, one of the groups. And there is a lot of healthy um, conversation, healthy advice, healthy inter interchange going there. Uh, there is a group I'm in, and it's called um, Women Over Women Over Sixty, right? And let me tell you something: any advice you need on anything at all, any conceivable subject, wow. just 
put a, just put a post in there and you will get advice from South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, because this, this group has thousands of women over 60 all over all the world. Over the world. And any, any advice, right? There are doctors in there, nurses in there. Uh, if, if you have pain a belly, you can, you can um, say, say, you know, what your finger sprain. <laughs> they, they will tell you uh, what you can do. And you, you, you have about, um, about 30 or 40 different options that nice. you can see which, which one uh, suits you. So you uh, it, are, it, is, it is amazing. You are enjoying the internet as a retired person. I have another it's, friend it's, of mine who is in her 80s and retired, obviously retired too. Well, I shouldn't say obviously because I have an aunt who is in her 80s and is very much working. But uh, another friend of mine uh, who is in her 80s and she also enjoys the internet because she doesn't have to sit on it and work on it like I do. Um, so for right. her, it's fun. And it's yes, it's very good for getting connected. Now, before we wrap up... Uh, this whole let me thing, just... Yes, go ahead. Let me just say, say one thing though. Um, also your communication costs are less. Yes. And that is something because you're not paying that, that phone bill because you can use WhatsApp and Messenger and, and talk to people, people who are right, um, right here in your own country. Yes. And, and you're not actually um, using the telephone and chalking up, um, chalking up telephone charges. Yes, that's true. That's a huge saving because retired people have to think about every single cent that you're spending. And even when I'm in Jamaica, I use WhatsApp to call people in Jamaica too, because that's, it, that's, that's yeah, what I use. Saves you a bag of money, saves you a bag of money. So before we wrap up this whole thing, before we wrap up this whole so thing. Quick, so quickly. No, we're not, we're not. That's what I said before. <laughs> that's what I said before. <laughs> I want to talk to you about advice because, you know, one of the, one of the things that we look for in people who are, what is the word now? Um, in the retired community is advice. What advice since you retired without expecting to retire, um, but just going ahead and doing it in hindsight, looking back and you talk about some of this in your book as well. And the book, I really enjoyed the book because it's funny. It's practical, very, very practical. So you Thank get you. real practical advice, not just tell your story, but what are some of the things that you would say to young people, first of all, who are looking ahead and saying, you know, well, I'm nowhere near ready to retire. And then to people my age, um, in the under 60s, <laughs> you notice how, you notice how wide that just, category is. Just under 60. <laughs> the, the just under 60s, who, um, like me, I'm in the creative industry, we don't really retire, but what do you right. say to, to people who are thinking of retiring one day? What, what do they have to look forward to and what do they need to do now? Okay, the first thing I would say is that um, in terms of financial, uh, the whole financial thing, you have to plan financially. You have to do your financial planning because that is something that I, I had not done, mm -hmm. right? So you, you have to, plan for it and especially those people who like work on contract you know mm -hmm. I was working on contract and every time I got my end of contract bonus I took it and and, and took a trip and, and and went to some world cup something somewhere so well, you know I can't beat you up for that because I work on contract and I work for myself and I have to tell you it's not that I don't think of retirement I have a little plan yes but I really believe in living in the moment so yeah you have, you, you, have, you I am you, you. have to live in live in the moment but but at the same time you know you need to carve off something just carve off carve off something and put it down because when you when you do that it really does accumulate uh, fortunately for me i had some insurance policies okay and i i had not even thought about uh, thought about them but they were they were um investment type policies and number one Number one, I was able to go to them when I had major, major illness mm -hmm. and in order to get funds for, um, for, for medical purposes. Mm -hmm. And number two, at age 65, I was, um, when they came into maturity, 
I was able to to, to get um you know Cash some in. funds from it. Right, so so funds. in essence, I I didn't know that I was I was saving for retirement in this way, but I actually actually was. So I would say you know really uh you know think about the financial aspect of it. Another thing is lifestyle. You have to ensure that you live a healthy lifestyle right. because when you get to this age and stage, if you have uh, like, uh, you know, the kidney disease, I have the diabetes and all that sort of a thing. It is a lot of medical, medical, um, you know, costs yes. really. And, and, and also, you know, just trying to manage your, your health. No, I, I'm a person who you, you could put a, a dozen uh, Julie mangoes or East Indian mangoes in front of me and I would have waxed them off. Um, me too, all but the you time. have to manage you know, those things as you get older, you know, you have to manage those things. You, you have you to because, because, you know, so you, so you need to look at your lifestyle, look at what you eat, look at how you're eating, from now, no matter what age you are, you have to start doing that so that you can be healthy in retirement. Because oh. when you're healthy in retirement, you can, uh, you, you can do so much, so much. So, you know, I need a final word from you as we wrap this thing up now. Final word from you about the new adventure, retirement, a new adventure. Final word about how you are feeling for the future in your retirement. Is there a lot more to come? Okay, uh, my final word is that let us not think about retirement as a destination, as a place, right? Retirement really is the continuing, uh, continuation of life's journey. And it, it is a wonderful journey. You, you, you start to do new things. There, there are so many new things that you can do. I have learned so much nice. in, in my uh, time in retirement. I, I have learned so much. I, I've been to boot camps. I've been to digital marketing boot camps and all that sort of a thing. So, you know, it is, it is really just a new phase of life uh, through which you can blossom. And I am looking forward to, I'm looking forward to the next, next year, actually, yeah. because I'm going, to be, I'm going to be establishing an online course for, um, for, for the same purpose. Really? Uh, just you know preparing exactly and i'm actually in the process of writing the book that's gonna go along yeah. along with that which is going to be a sequel to um to, to that book so mm -hmm. we have a lot to look forward to thank you so much patricia patricia reed war the author of retirement a new adventure you gotta get it and i think it doesn't matter what age you are this book will be helpful for you thank you so much for being on shelf life i what good is all I can say at this point and enjoy and, the rest of it. And thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure. <laughs> Blessings, my thank friend. You. Blessings. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Shelf Life. I'll see you again next week. Same place, same time, right here on Jamaicans.com for some more Shelf Life and we'll discover what else is on my shelf. As always, I'm inviting you to check out my website, check out my YouTube channel, and catch up on the shows that you've missed. jfallonread.com. See you again next week. Walk good. Mm -hmm.